Okay, I'm just going to walk you through the process of um, colorizing the areas for the color wheel. So you should make sure to begin with that your swatches palette, your color palette, and your color guide are showing. And with the colors, um, well, we'll talk about the different options in a minute. But let's just start selecting. So use your direct selection tool to select the different areas to color them. Um, you probably can use the ordinary selection tool, but you'll find the outer ring ones you have to use the direct selection tool. So let's just start off. Normally we'd start off with the top one. So we're looking for the select to select the one we're going to color yellow. It should be that one. No, it's not letting me select it. Try again. Yeah, that's that's the top one. And we want to color that yellow. So if you can't select with the direct selection tool, try with the, the whole selection tool, the black one. So between the two of them, you'll get it selected. And then straight away, move to the outer ring and select that as well. Now move to um, the lower triangle and we're going to put that as blue and then straight away move to the little outer ring colour and turn that blue as well. Then we want to go to the red one, it's like a fire engine red there, and again colour that red. The next thing we want to do is work on the secondary colours. So these are the primary colours. The secondary colours are sitting here and that's when, when you're mixing this as a paint version, you're going to mix the yellow and the red to come up with this orange. So select that outer area and colour that orange and then do the same out there. And then we look at these two, we've got red and blue and you're going to be mixing paint to try and come up with a green that looks a bit like this, or close to it. And same thing, put the same green out there. And then the last one we're going to look at is the combination of blue and red. The secondary colour for that is really what, what we'd call violet or purple. And then move the same thing, move that, go to the outer ring and just put the same colour there. Now we want to work with a, com a mixture of the primary with the secondary to produce the intermediary colour. So basically what we're going to do is a, a much yellower orange that sits in between because we're mixing more yellow into this. So to do that, select the outer ring and then go down to your colours and then select what you think is a, a reasonable looking um, yellow orange. And then when you come up here, you can use the sliders to play around with it. You can change the colour mode from red RGB, red, green, blue to CMYK. You can do it in either. It's probably easier just to do it in RGB. And just move around those sliders till you think you've got um, a, a better, yet more. that obviously looks too yellow, it's too similar. So you might want to sort of add, that looks too red. So we're looking for something that's quite light and that is um, really just a, an orangier, um, an orangier uh, yellow, so a step in between. So some people when they're doing this they might end up with an orange that's a little bit more like that. Um, so you might pick one in between. Just depends on how you go with your colour mixing when you're working with the paint. But basically you're looking for the step in between. So let's try and do a, a more red version of this orange. So um, you might again sort of come, come in here and look and see if you can get a, a colour that you think is close to it. So maybe that, but maybe it's still a bit too red so you might want to kind of push it. That's too similar. So we're just looking for a step in between. So that's probably getting close close to it. So it's not exactly the same. It's um, a reddier orange, so a slightly darker orange. So it's a step in between this and the red. Same for the next one. We're going to look at something that's a step in between the violet and the red. So we're over here now looking for something that's a step between red and violet. So it's going to be somewhere in here. So that's actually pretty good. 
Um, so I've got a colour that's, you know, a mixture of violet and red to make a, a much more reddish, reddish violet or reddish purple. Next one, you're going to have a, a cooler purple. So it's got it's, it's the violet with some of that blue added. And so again, you can come over here and, and sort of give it a bit of a guess. So we're working more towards the blue violet, which might be somewhere like that. And then, you know, if that's a little too dark, you maybe start to think, okay, should I change it? So it's a little, got a bit, little bit more of the blue in there. So a little bit of your own judgment there and obviously you can play with the red, how much red is in there. You can also do this in the CMYK version, in which case you're really working with cyan, magenta, yellow and black. Try not to have too much black in these. Um, they are quite saturated colours. So you can see that most of what's happening is in the cyan and the magenta. So how much of that do you want to have? So you can control it there. Mixing them in RGB or CMYK, either is fine. Um, so just get a step in between. And you might decide you want to push it you know, a little bit lighter than that. that. That's okay. So you could come up and sort of experiment with it up, you know, up here a bit, coming up a bit. So it should feel like it's a slightly violet. So if it's not violet enough, you might add a little bit more red to it. So you're going to use your own judgment. So see that one, that now is a little bit more, more like a lilac almost. So it's a bluish purple. And the next one you're going to do would be um, mixing in between the blue and the green. So we're mixing the primary with the secondary. So the primary with the green. So that's going to be a slightly greenish blue. So they're somewhere over here. Oops. Man's Ed, I want to make sure I've got this selected. So it's really kind of a turquoise we're probably after in there. And again, you can play around with um, how much green it has, how much blue. You're the one that's in charge of how much green it goes. So somewhere around that kind of, probably no red at all. And experiment till you're happy with it. If, it's too, if you think it's too green and there's a bit more blue, then obviously you can kind of push the... The blue content up a bit till it feels a little bit more like a turquoise. If you go too far then it just looks like another blue. So it really needs to be a step in between. So maybe that's closer. And then the last one is um, a step in between the primary yellow and the secondary green. So when you're mixing your paints you probably start with your yellow and then just add small amounts of the darker colour till you've got what you want. So I would take that approach with the colour mixing is um, uh, just take your, a larger amount of the lighter colour and just add very small amounts of the darker colour to it so you can control and you don't waste too much paint that way as well. So we're looking for what's really a yellow green. So then we're over here um, and then have a look at it. Do you think you need to darken it or lighten it? Again, it's a little bit of your own personal preferences will come into this and so on. So something like that is looking pretty good. Um, when you're happy with it, um, save that and then you can go on to the other figure. Now that's going to be pretty much the same in terms, I won't do the whole thing in that in terms of that your your colours from the outer ring are the same as you've got here. So you can actually eyedropper from one and probably eyedropper to the other. Yeah, and you'll find that your colours, you've probably already got your colours turning up in the colour palette. Um, so that could make it easier. But the only key difference here that we're getting to use a slightly different tool. So you are repeating the outer ring on the other one in here. And then we're using the colour guide, this one to put the, the shade in. So it's going to look like that. So I'll just do a couple of the... Um, so just, just have a look and you can kind of match what colour you had. Um, so if you eyedropper a colour... Oh, whoops, what did I do there? That's not my yellow green, is it? I think that was more like this, yeah? So when you eyedropper the colour, it turns up here and it turns up automatically in your swatches and at that point you can say um, new swatch and actually add that into your swatches palette 
exactly that one. So it's got the little tag there and when you go um, to your next document um, you should be able to bring that in or you can remix it. So you can look at your CMYK or RGB and you can remix exactly the same colour. So if I have a look here, say I want to make sure I do get the exact same green, when I click on that and look in my say new swatch again, there's the numbers to make a CMYK version of it and we can also do it as an RGB version. So my numbers are 141, 198, 63 and I can also probably add that to my library and it should show up there and if I want to bring that colour in an easy way to remix it and this is good for when you want to transfer a colour and want to make sure it's exact um, you can actually say let's make a new swatch And you can even open your swatch libraries and see if we've got our other library. Probably not. So let's make a new one. I don't want group. Why is it doing that? So let's just get something close to it. New swatch. And there, yeah, we can change those settings. So it's a RGB one. And we can just type in whatever we had on the other document. Okay, so that way you can get exactly the same and match it and just add it to your swatch. And then all you're doing is doing a shade in here of the same colour. So complete that circle using the colours that you've got out here and repeating them in here and then just include the shades. That's all we're asking you to do and that's really the end of the assignment. And I'll talk to you next week, see how you go. And I am sending, up, uh, sending around an email <coughs> with an updated version of the, um, this document because I think you'll find in the, if, if the document you've got isn't letting you select these easily, I'll send around like a version 1.2 or something like that so you'll know that's the latest one or version 2 or something and that'll be the one for you to use so it's easy to select these. So try and, try and have a go just at least at this one and then you can move on to doing this one and use the same colours that you're seeing on that outer wheel. So it's easy to put some of the pure ones in because you know they're the same, we got them straight from this menu anyway. And then when you come over here, whatever you've got selected there, which is that, then you can find easily find um, the shade. So you've got to click off it to deselect and then you can put the, the shade in. So start with the ones that are really easy and obvious. Um, get the outside ones going and then you know have a look at what you had on this one. So it should be violet down the bottom there. Yeah, and we use the violet straight from the swatches, so that's pretty easy. And then do the in-between steps, either repeat them or copy the colour values for the ones that are in between. So you can choose how dark you go with them, and you might even go to that, but it doesn't really, I think it's probably the other one, that one, it's better. And so on, until you've got the whole thing finished. And that's the first exercise that you've been asked to do for your colour unit in terms of trying to improve, trying to um, develop your digital skills and to improve your understanding of the colour wheel. And I would definitely suggest you have a go at doing this digitally for yourself um, before you then try and print out the blank copy and, um, and then try and mix the paint in there. So um, you can, once you've done the colour wheel, you can save it. Um, so you've got the original document still. So resave this with a different name. So call it completed colour wheel. And then you'll be able to still open the black and white one. So it's this one that you will actually print out and then have a go at colouring using paint. Now we don't, usually we'd say gouache because it dries really um, smoothly. But um, whatever you've got at home, 
if you've got acrylics or something, a cheap set of acrylics, just give it a go. And what it'll do is give you a bit of an understanding. Yes, my primary probably comes out of a tube, the three primaries. Might not look exactly like that, but something close. Um, sometimes you might have secondaries coming out of a tube. Uh, but for this exercise, try and mix up your own. So you're mixing, you understand that all your colours come out of the primaries. So you're mixing the red and the yellow to get the orange and then painting it out here. And then you're, while you've got that orange, you're then adding a bit more yellow to it and putting it out here. So there's in-between steps do not come out of a tube and they will probably look different for everybody. You'll probably find you won't get anything quite like this violet. It'll be quite hard to get that in paint um, just by mixing a straight red and blue. Sometimes that'll look almost black. So it will depend a lot on the blue that you use and the red that you use. So you might find you get a slightly better result if you've got a red that's a little bit more on the crimson side than if you've got a fire engine red. So it's whatever you've got at home, but have a go at mixing it and then put it out there and then add the blue to it. You might find for this one you do actually have to add a tiny bit of white to make the whole thing work um, if it's gone too grey. So a little, little bit of experience mixing is what we're hoping that you'll gain from this exercise as well. Alright, I'll hope to talk to you soon. Bye.